Alright everyone, welcome to uh, Lost Legend Lost Legends of Redwall, the Scout Act 1. I uh, hope you will enjoy this as much as I do. I might have lowered the uh, audio a bit one second. So I found this by kind of accident. Sort of, half on half. Do so, I have dialogue in this? No idea. <clears throat> so I found this by accident and uh, I downloaded the demo of Act 3. And I kinda liked it. So, uh, you know. It was kind of cheap too. I'm uh, gonna have to check up what it cost on Steam, but it was like seven, uh, seven euro for me. I paid pay euro, so um, yeah. never mind. Though, let's get into it. Sorry about the count counter up there. There's nothing I can do about it. This looks like a training field to me. Midsummer is only two days hence. I don't see how you can possibly be ready, Brother Jethro. Fear not, old friend. Formal assures me that the stage will be ready this evening, and I've never known him to be wrong. Everything will be quite all right. Cutting things close doesn't suit me. You know that. I'm a planner. I'm a philosopher. This whole business has my humors out of balance. There they are, Brother Wilport. You just let me fret about the play, and you make sure the feast is perfect. I'm especially looking forward to that hot root sun salad. Oh yes, yes, quite right. There's much to be prepared. Friar Randall was concerned that the cheese and onion hogs bake was too heavy to follow the brazier leeks. He may be correct. You see? There's far more need for your talents in the kitchen than out here. Let your old friend do what he's good at. Making a fool of himself. <laughs> oh my. Very well. I'll take my leave. But please try to keep on schedule. You know how I worry. <laughs> Indeed I do. Sister Edelweiss, I trust William won't perish before he has a chance to taste the good friar's blackberry crumble. Mm. Oi, now, it's hard to say. It is surely a bit of black water fever. Now I can't remedy with some nettles and wort, but that foul temper, now, that just might be fatal. I'm not grumpy. No? Boy, Yoki, then why in the sharp tongue when I ask for that filthy old wind glass? The rusty old thing is reeking with mould and mire. It's likely the cause of your fever for all the fuss it's bearing. Eh, sorry, Grandfather. I, um, found it in the library. Your nail. You drinkers as tonic, and you'll be out storming dark forests with all them's dibbons afore a moon's turned her face this way, Perroy. <laughs> We're ready for hilltop camp, Brother Jethro. Shall we wait for you? No need to wait, lads. Carry on, and I'll be there shortly. Thank you for your legendary healing skills, sister. As always, we are in your debt. We? Oh, <laughs> I say it's just you who be so annoy. <laughs> Oh, I haven't seen this in ages, and such perfect timing, dear boy. Do you know who this wig glass belonged to, William? Honest truth, I just thought it was another trinket you'd packed away for no good reason. Trinket? Better waffles. This was one of the trusty tools carried by the Lilygrove Scout Corps. 
back when Clooney the Scourge, that wretched pirate, laid siege to Red Wall Abbey. And it so happens that this very thing has a role to play in the story we'll be telling for the Abbot's celebration. I've written a play to share one of my lost legends with all of Red Wall. Of course, everyone knows about Matthias and Constance and Basil Staghair, but few know about the trio of brave woodlanders from Lilygrove who played a crucial role in those events. Have you ever heard of Liam or Sophia Rivermouse? No, but, um, I don't suppose you could be telling me the story, since I'm bedridden and ailing, and might not live to see the play. Please? Ah, let's see. Well, to begin. Ah, yes, initiation. Twas a frozen evening in midwinter. The sky was clear but for a loosely bound fleet of easterly clouds that wore the light of twilight and had earlier that day dusted the hollows of the weathered oaks with snow. A frosty breeze stirred the heavy locks of the cypresses' winter needles and two mice warmed their paws against the January chill. Liam and Sophia were young, ambitious and betrothed. Both had trained hard to join the ranks of the Lilligrove Scout Corps a rather storied group of woodland rangers who kept safe the lands betwixt Mossflower Country and the Mountain Warrens. The one had graduated that week prior, and now it was time for the other to prove their mettle. Once initiated, they planned to wed. But that was not to be. Not yet, anyway. Initiation night. It's finally happening. Oh, we've planned so long for this. And now that it's here, I'm not sure I'm ready. I feel the same way. I haven't the faintest notion of what comes next. It's exciting, isn't it? Yes. I'm <laughs> frightening. <laughs> Alas, I am late. I hope you'll pardon it. The fiery ring of devastation needed to be refueled. I trust neither of you caught a shiver. I was sick with the wretch for my initiation. Didn't make a bit of difference, though. A scout needs to be ready, no matter the situation. So, which one of you is in the dock this fine winter evening? <laughs> I think I'm gonna play as Liam for a first uh, playthrough, actually. That would be me, and I'm not about to wretch. <laughs> oh, what do we do now? <laughs> Quite sure, are you? Sophia, I trust you didn't tell our initiate about the adder's eggs. <laughs> Not a peep, sir. The secret is safe with me. It makes me a proud mouse to see youngsters like yourself continuing with the Scout Corps. In order to become a full member of the Lily Grove Scout Corps, you must complete a series of tests to prove you've got the metal. These are the things you've been training for for the last several moons, so I don't expect any surprises. I'm so excited for you to finally join us as a fully-fledged scout, Liam. Oh, and guess what? Coyle's going to let me oversee your trials myself. Captain Robin thought I'd be too biased to be the best judge of your skills, but I assured him I've never gone easy on you before, nor will I start tonight. Now, we'll start by heading to a nearby cave. It's treacherous, but nothing you can't handle. Plus, I'll be there to guide you. You'll do great. I know it. Oh, and before we go, take this. A proper scout's got to have an adventurous journal. Nice voice acting. They didn't have that in... Uh, in... Uh, <coughs> let's actually stop here for a second. Um, in the demo, that is of so Act 3, they didn't have voice acting. So, uh, you know, you, you had to be a speed reader to read uh, at least the longer, uh, you know, longer texts. Uh, and uh, all of this about Liam and uh, Sophie being betrothed, you had to, you know, read that on your own. Over here, like here, uh, this is gonna be filled out with, uh, you know, others that we meet. Uh, you already know how a rat and onion apples the, all this taste. Oh yeah, and uh, apparently you can find stuff. Oh 
Also, I don't remember Tuna the Scourge being a pirate, but more of a, like, warlord, sort of. Hold on! I thought you were sticking around to oversee me. I am, but you've got to complete them on your own. I'll be around to help, even if you can't see me. Here we go. All you've got to do is follow the cave to reach each of your tasks. Oh, so that kid, you know, that is being read as a story, I would believe. It feels a little out of place, but at the same time, I know how you speak when you... I don't know if it's having a cold, but you know, having a cold, you really don't sound very, you know, uppity. Even I can't stand myself when I'm sick. I'm not saying bad voice acting, I'm saying. Ne never mind, I'm sorry. Hello? Ready to start? For your first trial, you've got to figure out how to get across this gap. If I were you, I'd try using my trusty slingshot. What I wanted to say is that it felt a little bit off, but I understand it. I had to figure this out on my own in the uh, demo. Great shot, Liam! Oh, you've always had a knack for the slingshot. Now, continue up ahead for the next trial. Whew. That wasn't nearly as hard as I thought it would be. <laughs> uh, I'm not nervous at all. You've got this, Liam. Your Sophia believes in you. Very interesting pants, I just have to mention that. Ready for your next trial? You've got to identify which flag your scent is passing over. But, Sophia, there's no wind in this cave, is there? Can't you feel the cool draught, Liam? Or is your fur that much thicker than mine? As you know, scent travels on the wind, and wind is just about everywhere, even in these caves. If you pay close attention, you'll be able to sense the wind's motion all around you, Almost as if you can see it. Watch the direction the wind is carrying your scent, and you'll never be caught unaware by your enemies. But ignore it, and anyone might come tracking you. I had to figure this out on my own in the demo. Um, as I said, is the traveling. Which flag does the scent touch? The pink one. That's it! Good pick! While out in the wild, be sure to watch where your scent is being carried. Making sure your scent doesn't drift into the nose of a foe could be the difference between life or death. Now, shimmying across that ledge should help you cross this ravine. But you didn't hear that from me. That's actually quite cool, you know, that, uh, you know, if you sneak to the right, you know, kind of like hunting. Uh, kind of like hunting, you know, if you scent, uh, if you sneak up on your prey where, you know, the wind is to your back, you can now just, whoop, shit, bye. Uh, so, you know, if you, if you like, oh, this is actually quite, uh, uh, you know, if you, quite a cool idea that, you know, it's actually easier to sneak along the right side, but the wind is blowing to the left. From the what's it say? Yes, it's blowing, you know, from the right to the left. So we have to take the the, uh, the left. Never mind. Uh, left and right of a cue to uh, do this. You know, yeah. This descent kind of decides where you have to go. I wish I could do that. My pound of flesh or fat, whatever. Nice room. This is a sneaky room, isn't it? For this next task, you'll need to determine which of the doors have a rat hidden behind them. 
a fake rat that is, and avoid them. Only one of the doors is free of any intruder. That's the one you've got to pick. Find the rat, huh? Shouldn't be too difficult. Just got to use my sniffer. And now we actually get to learn this. We cannot move while we're in the sniffer mode. That's the picture. Yep. Aha! No rat hiding here. Fantastic job, Liam. I'm glad I haven't lost you to the rats yet. What's that bag? <laughs> Jeez. Also, since it is, uh, you know, red wall, I am pretty sure that the mouses are gonna be very small and the rats are gonna be very big. And you know, I'm pretty much pretty sure if there's an owl, owl it's gonna you know crash the game. Oh well, yeah, how how it is you do? You go close and you sniff, and then you have to press E, I believe it was. Learn how candle smells. Here we'll be making use of our nose once again. First. I want you to focus on those peppers there. Learn the scent and commit it to memory. Spicy with a hint of earth, altogether a fair bit pungent. I'd suggest logging all the scents you learn in your scout journal. Never know when you may need to sniff out the difference between a mole and a mushroom. So this and then e. Well done! Hold that scent in your mind and remember, it's written in your journal if you need a refresher. Now. We know sniffing can help us see the unseen, but it can also help us identify different scents in the air. So, pick out the candle that smells like chili peppers. Pull my finger, that is actually quite a good joke. My dad taught me once, you know, he started smelling like something was wrong with his fingers. And they're like, smell my finger. And you know, me being a kid, did. And then I said, I just scratched my ass, like Bleh. Okay, so what do we have here? We have mostly red. Actually, we have a journal for this. Sense. Uh, what was it? Chili pepper, was it? Yep, okay. Pepper. And we can see that it's. I don't really know what this is, but you know. Looking for something red. Uh, it's not this one. Wasn't it somewhere over here? Mm, nah, hold on. No way, that's my scent, isn't it? Yeah, that's my scent. And that's an annoying thing, because this scent is right there. So I gotta have to... I don't know what spicy plus two means. I really don't know what it means. You know, spicy. It's not like I can see more of it. Or maybe I do. We'll be looking for dark green, lime green, and another lime green. We just do this, and we can see that it smells. Another candle here. Yes, there was. But 
that's not what we're looking for. Looking for uh, a perfect match, Liam. Robin might as well let us skip the rest of the trials. <laughs> You're an expert already. Well, I owe my success to my instructor, Miss Sophia. You'll need to once again shimmy along the wall to reach the final trial. Uh, but be careful. This one's got a twist. Suddenly fall. Do they just like write you off as a you know failed examination or not an examination, but you know a failed student? Or <laughs> um, we were down, weren't we? Yes, we were. Jeez. Choose wisely. What's this about, Soph? Your final trial is a trial of stealth. You've got to use everything you've learned so far. And don't let the rats inside see or smell you. Luckily, us mice are quite small and firm and quite dull. So you should be able to sneak through, no problem. So all I have to do is get by the rats without them spotting me. And then I'll finally be a scout. Yes, Liam. You'll be an official protector of Lily Grove. Choose wisely. Damn it. What's this about, Soph? Your final trial is a trial of stealth. You've got to use everything you've learned so far. And don't let the rats inside see or So all I have to do is get by the Yes, Liam. Oh, that's bullshit. I just stood too far out the wall. So, yes. Can't go there. All right. Now, where does this wind blow?
if, how should I... Probably shouldn't go where the scent is. Like the scent is going like a zigzag over to where I was. So if I run past him on that side, that is gonna carry my scent past him. So I have to run past him on this side and make sure this sucker doesn't see me. What's all this? Congratulations, Liam, our newest member of the Lily Grove Scout Corps. So uh, I passed? And with flying colors. Excellent work, Initiate. <laughs> Excellent work. I'm quite certain I couldn't have done any better myself. If I were carrying a sack full of dibbons. <laughs> Congratulations, Initiate. I, I must confess that I, I was of the mind that you weren't quite ready. It was Captain Robin who pushed for your somewhat expedited initiation. It would appear he saw something in you that I failed to. Until this evening, that is. Ever since you were Dibbon, Liam, I thought you'd make an excellent scout. And you've never proven me wrong. Thank you, sir. It's an honor. Having completed your training, the official badge and equipment of office are yours to bear. A way glass, a rucksack, and, of course, the blooming lily on your jacket. It brings me great joy and a fair bit of pride to welcome you to the ancient family of the Lily Grove Scout Corps. There's just one more thing you have to do before you can really call yourself a scout. Follow me, Liam. Finally, you'll get to see Hilltop Camp and meet our very own scout chef, Rootsworth. He'll help you with the soup. Soup? What soup? The scouts are founded on principles of service and fellowship. As such, we crown each new initiate with cooking the scouts' supper their first night here. Well, after cooking for a family as big as mine, this'll be easy. Liam was oddly at peace. His soul, which had been sore anxious only hours before, was calm and his animus at rest. Yet despite a still and restful heart, a frigid wind slowly began to pick up from the south and the crickets stopped their song. Unknown to any in Lilligrove, a black-masted ship made landfall in secret, and the shadow of a long and iron-barbed tail crept up upon the unsuspecting village. Welcome to Hilltop Camp, home of the Lilligrove Scouts. Wow! Your descriptions didn't give this place proper credit. Why don't you pull out your way glass and I'll give you the royal tour. Those tents are where the captains sleep. Since they're in charge of keeping the night fires and beacons roaring, they've pitched their stakes by the firewood store. Coyle snores like a badger lord, though. <laughs> I don't know how Robert gets even a wink of sleep. You get used to it. I trust me, I know. I know. Is that total ice? Isn't that waterfall beautiful? You wouldn't guess when it's frozen over, but just up at its source is a hot spring. It's my favorite place at camp to dip my feet, especially after a fierce day of training. In this cold, you're gonna get whatever it's called, something thermy. Also, I saw this heading, uh, you know, 22-7, you know, like a compass. That's the main tent. It's sort of like our very own Great Hall. We use it mostly for hosting guests from neighboring scout groups. We even have little shoe-sized chairs for when members of the Galson come to visit. That there is the lakeside watchtower. It gives you a great view of the camp, but not much else. The actual night watch I've mentioned is at the lookout, but that's uh, closed for construction tonight. 
<laughs> yeah. So, uh, don't go investigating or anything. And I guess these are sour tents. Those are the scouts' overnight tents. We don't always stay in them, but they are surprisingly cozy when we do. Looks cool, but then again, you probably can't close them, so you know, never mind. That's a palisade, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be cracked in a few moments. Anything else? There's another part of a palisade over there. Maintenance. Or was it maintenance? 